G'day guys, it's uh, Steve Morgan here and uh, Rup Gaiden from uh, www.tacklejunkie.fish and uh, we've had a big day today Rup, we've been out on the Gold Coast since 4am. Long day. Long day um, and it's an unusual tackle test for us because normally we get tackle in a fishing monthly tackle junkie, we like flogging it for three to six months yeah. to see how we go but bit of a different story for this because these are the new Atomic Arrows rods. Now these were launched at the after trade show yep. last year with a big uh, with a big bang and whistle, but they've only just hit the shelves yes. just now. So Rup, you and anyone that doesn't know Rob Gaden Jr. here, his background is in Mo Tackle. So you yes. have for, you've uh, overseen the transport purchase sale of we've, about a billion rods. We've played with a lot of rods, <laughs> yeah. So of the two people at this table, this is the man that knows, you know, value for money, I suppose, in yeah. a rod. So, so just run us through the, the theory behind these arrows. Uh, the retail price is between $180 to $230, depending on if it's a light estuary stick or a heavy off-water stick. Yeah. Tell us about how many rods there are in the range and how they're built. Yeah, so there's, uh, there's 14 rods in the series, uh, four different individual series or categories amongst them. So there's a brim specialty, uh, a barra, an estuary and an offshore, uh, each just catered to those you know specific techniques and markets um, designed to do both bait and lure fishing uh, but you know really sort of um, specialty areas in each of those little categories. So. so one of the things I've noticed over the years and we've done the after trade show we've, we've run the trade magazine for nearly 15 years yep. um, a rod now that's like a $200 rod was five years ago's five hundred dollar rod, correct? And it was ten years ago's thousand dollar rod. So the the bang for your buck, I suppose, you get nowadays is is off the chart. So so these arrows, they they come, they supplied in this bag. So if you see them in the tackle store, it's a fairly distinctive white bag. I don't see too many rods that come in the no, white bag. No, they're hard to miss. That's for sure. And they can protect your rods from banging together when they're uh, when you're going on tour. Um, the thing that uh, Jay Morgan tells us, and Jay's the uh, the national sales manager there at, uh, at Atomic and Frogley's Offshore, and one of the guys that designed these rods yes. with uh, Mick Starkey, is the fact that it's full Fuji guides. Yes. And, and again, Roop, tell us the benefits of the Fuji guides as opposed to some of the cheaper guides on the market are. Yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of rods used to advertise that they were Fuji. Whether they were or not was always hard to tell. Uh, that's been really cracked down the last couple of years. Uh, and if, if they are genuine Fuji, you'll know because it's, it's something they can really sell just because of the quality quality of them. Um, so these are deep pressed O-ring guides, uh, so they were made specifically just to be you know, a lot harder to knock around, um, you know, you can you can sort of be as rough on them as you like with the fish, you can fish hard, you know, use them all day, You're not gonna, they're not going to let you down. Uh, so you know, you know you've got that Fuji quality on the rod but without the price tag that you might have been used to, you know, five, ten years ago, um, I guess technology's come a long way and, and advanced quite a bit but the prices have actually come the other way you get a lot more bang for your buck, as you yeah, were saying. that's right. I don't know if you were around when uh, G. Loomis rods hit the shores over here, but I know when they, they came, they were probably as light as these rods. Yes. And, you know, you would spend 500 to $800, even back then, yes. on top-of-the-line, high-quality graphite light rods in the hands. But nowadays, you can get it for, for low three figures. Yes, that's now, right. Now, look, in the background here, we've got some footage of, of what was happening this morning. We've we got two rods here. we got the um, we got one called the Brim Surface, which is a seven-foot, um, three to eight pound line obviously designed for that brim market very sort of a slow taper rod and uh, the way Jay described it was uh, it keeps them on when you get yeah, hooked. Yeah that's it he said you won't lose a brim once they're on the taper was designed specifically for that you know they can be a bit tricky to hook um, as anyone who's fished surface with brim will know you know you see a lot of fish you see a lot of little slurps but you might not necessarily hook them but they've they've done these rods so that once you get it they won't come off. That's it the other one we had was the estuary and this is a bit more of a, a beefy rod we uh, we matched the um, the the lighter one, the, the brim surface, what we had a lighter reel on that route. What's yep, this one? That's a twenty five hundred Daiwa Emeraldus. Yep, so that was nice. I think I'll commandeer this for most of the time. And uh, yes. the first thing we stretched it on was the, uh, the the little GT that you see in the footage happening now. Yeah, two, so, two casts in and you were on, yep. so that, that was uh, well yep. timed. Now the uh, the other one, of course, is that the estuary. This is this is more of a, for me, this feels like a, a heavier bastic, trevally, yep. popping yep. flathead. If you're throwing bigger, for, bigger, yep. bigger plastics for flathead, that sort of thing, uh, you'd be really well suited to that. So we paired that up with a 3,000 size Luvia, so you had a distinct disadvantage uh, when we are up at Brim Canal, and you're trying to catch stuff on 30 pound braid yeah. and uh, 10 pound litre so but, yeah uh, and I had belief in myself it didn't really come to <laughs> fruition but I did believe yeah that's right so look both of them both of the rods themselves um, uh, light in the hand 
Yes. The, the guides are like, the tapers are nice, and indeed, we put some crazy bends that you might be seeing on the screen here with the, that little GT yeah. fish going under the boat. Um, I sort of tried to break mine and, and yeah. couldn't. So and it wouldn't go. Yeah, no. it wouldn't. So normally I have six months to break them. only got three months to break them at the moment. Uh, well, only one day today. Yeah, we had with this one. two hours, yeah. So so couldn't do that. The, the, one, the one thing I noticed was, where's the bloody hook keeper? <laughs> you know, so, yes. Um, look, aftermarket hook keepers are available. I think they're about four bucks a piece. Yeah, you buy, buy a little two pack of the Fuji ones for around eight or nine dollars um, from any sort of tackle store that will keep the Fuji stuff. But uh, they are really handy, and you should get one if you buy one of these. Yeah. <laughs> you, you'll need it. And, and I think that they're sold by the same guys that design they the are, yeah. There might be a plan in yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's some sort of on selling going on there, so that's fine. You betcha. For me, the um, for the, the brim surface is it's a very slow action rod. It reminds me a lot of uh, some of the Norries trout program rods. I, I use they're, they're a strong rod but they're a slow taper yes. so a lot of um, seven foot spin rods that we're used to using in Australia have a very like a very tippy action and then they lock up quite hard that's right doesn't give you a lot of cushioning when you're using say a lighter fluorocarbon or a light leader yep. and that fish surges underneath the boat this um, this the lock up point of this rod was a lot lower yep. and again you can see that in the footage of the uh, of that rod bending yeah the Trevelli had you bent back to the front yeah. grip just about so. you betcha so, and so for me and I do a lot of fishing with this sort of stuff I was real comfortable with this rod, yeah. I, I like it. You know, if you gave me five of those and said go and go fishing for a year for brim with them, I got no dramas at all. That's how, right. Yeah. How did you how did you find the heavier one? And and what we were throwing on them were um were the sugar pens. So yeah, um, so you had the smaller 70 mil sugar pen uh, yep. with some of the trick bits hooks on the back. Uh, yep. So they came in the packages with the rods, uh, which was pretty exciting because we love just playing with lures and fishing gear and yep. tricking them out. So that was really cool. Uh, I had the bigger 95 mil sugar pen on, um, just with the standard hooks. Um, I was probably targeting more Jackson and uh, Trevally, yep. putting it in tight to structure. Um, but you were sort of fishing, you know, open air areas with the, the sandy banks and whatnot for for That's the trim. Right. So yeah, there's only just over. A centimetre difference between those two baits makes a real big difference with fish like brim that extra size. That's like right, yeah. You, you caught a brim on the big one, um, but more brim look like they were interested yeah, in the smaller they bait. They obviously thought that was a bigger chip than your little potato yeah. chip. Um, but the, Shoestring. Yeah, the difference <laughs> between them, um, you could sort of see right through the action, but also when it landed on the water, you know, how much disturbance it caused um, and the brim are a little bit more flighty than some of the other species, so um, I, I scared a few away. Um, but it, it actually was good having the bigger lure with the extra little bit of weight plugging it into the pontoons and and little poles and uh, boat ramps that sort of thing so it was it was you know actually really nice to cast every rod you pick up i find takes you know between 20 30 casts maybe to to find your range with it yep. like you like anything else like a golf club or anything else you know you find your range once i had that dialed in it was it was really nice to use the grips are comfy they are lightweight like we talked about uh it was it was nice yeah it, yeah. it was a good morning on the water actually that's, yeah. it, that's right yeah and we should do it every morning we, before yeah. uh, before work but we don't i'll put it in the suggestion <laughs> box now one thing about the sugar pens these are probably australia's favorite whiting lure absolutely like yeah. but the thing about the, the thing about them is and this one's been tricked up with them with some of the uh, trick bits um the little assist hooks the, the sugar pens just sort of don't really need them a lot of the time because when they're at when they're at rest they sit um, a very head up attitude. That's right, and particularly for brim, they're probably not as important because they will sit like that on the pause. Whereas yep. when you're winding for the whiting, it's a constant retrieve, and, and they are and sort of right. skipping, and, and it will sit It'll flat in the right water the with the like trailers this. out the back, yeah, with the little skirt sort of flapping um, in its trail, and and that's why I think they're so effective on whiting. But uh, brim, when they're sitting like that, you know, they are little sort of timid yeah, slurpers. Yeah. And that's uh, right. And a lot of the fish we caught today. Some of them had both hooks in, but, yeah. but others just had those little That's assist right. hooks in there. Yeah. And I'm always surprised at how hard you can pull on those and not break them. I have broken some in the past yeah. on big fish, but, but generally that fish will come in, the, this assist hook will be right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah. This treble hook may hook somewhere around the head as well, um, but and generally... They are deadly, deadly strong. Yep. Uh, it's, sorry, sharp, sharp. Yeah, because yeah. at one point while I was just holding your lure, I ended up with the treble All and the other ones <laughs> in my hand at the same time, which was not ideal, but they are sharp. You betcha. So the big news about the sugar pens, though, and everyone who's a topwater fisherman, I'm sure, has a sugar pen, is that are the new colours. So there's a couple here. There's one's a very prawn-like colour, one's a bait fish colour. Yeah. Um, now I'm not going to show you the front of them. Do you remember what the colours are? One's called the FG, isn't it? Something something <laughs> FG, 264 FG, and a 280 something C 280 something. There you go a 264 FG and a CT 287. So, 287. The, so very bait fish profile for the uh, for the more pelagic fish, but anything that eats a prawn is going to love the freaking good. Yeah, I'd probably go, you know, a clear water one with the prawn if, you, if you've got a bit of colour in the water, maybe 
maybe the, the holographic one just for that bit of flash, a uh, little bit of extra attention. You know, everybody's different, but that's how I'd pull them out of my tackle box. So. Yep, you betcha. So, uh, so the news, in, we'll summarise the news. Um, the Atomic Arrows are in store now. Yep. Um, thousands of them, Jay said, thousands around the thousands country. Thousands of them. They flooded the tackle stores with them, was, you know, the conversation on the phone earlier in the week. Yep. And uh, we were glad to get them and, and are really impressed. And, yeah, the next time I'm in the rod, rod market, I'll definitely be considering, yeah. that's for sure. Well, my, my news is if, you, if you're interested in checking them out, um, you can do it on uh, frogleysoffshore.com.au. But if you want to check them out at your local Frogleys dealer, they should be in store now. Yep. These little fellas should be ready to ship now. They're out and about as well. Uh, the trick bits are also in the stores. Um, to match with your sugar pens, there's lure weights, holographic tape, rattles for your soft plastics. There's all sorts of cool stuff to you know sit and play in the garage and, and fine-tune your stuff. You so. betcha. So until next time, uh, this is uh, Stephen Rib checking out from a 4am start.